My name is Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV 7. Thanks for being with us and you're watching a program called Discover Queen Anne's County. And what we do every week, we talk to different people in the county who contribute to the success of our community. We thought with what we'd like to start doing is talk to some of the clergy members uh, who not only keep us busy on Sundays, but we find out are involved in a million other activities that help make Queen Anne's County this special place we have. And my first guest, it's a hard thing, I guess, Father, when I go to your church, is Father Mark from uh, uh, Mother of Sorrows in St. Peter's Parish. He's been kind enough to join us. Father Mark, thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you. Thanks much. for having me. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to wing it here for the first time, all right? Okay. How about we talk about first, let everybody know what the, because the parish, I think, is kind of unique. I think we call it one parish with two churches, so explain right. all that for right. me. Right. Well, uh, St. Peter's on Route 50 has always been a mission church. It's actually the older uh, parish community, one, okay. actually one of the oldest in the country, really, uh, founded in 1765. And, uh, but it never uh, was its own parish. It was always um, dependent on another parish. Okay. For a while, it was St. Joe's in Cordova uh, and, or... Uh, uh, a community on Kent Island, uh, and now um, it's uh, been attached to our Mother of Sorrows for many, many years. Now, right. what I find interesting, and I'm sure a lot of people don't know, the number of services you have to do, just for the heck of it, between the two churches, just what's a weekend schedule? Weekend schedule is uh, Saturday night at St. Peter's at 5.30, and then Sunday morning at 7.30 at St. Peter's and then 9.15 at Our Mother of Sorrows and 11.30 at Our Mother of Sorrows. Okay, so that's, that's a busy weekend. So, yes. <laughs> that's a yes. very busy weekend, yes. all right? Yeah. Uh, is there one governing board for both? I mean, how does it work? Uh, I didn't know it was called a missionary church. i got to be honest with you, until right. I think it was last Sunday. Well, most of the Catholic churches on the Eastern Shore have mission churches attached to okay. them, or okay. maybe even two mission oh, churches okay. attached right. to them. Okay. And that just means it's a smaller church? Than smaller uh, community uh, that is not able to sustain itself as its own parish. Okay. So right. it's attached to it's the, to attach the nearest, uh, okay. larger parish. Which makes sense, right? It makes right. sense. Hard on you, but probably good for the community, right? Right. But usually they don't have a separate... Uh, parish council, or usually it's it's considered under the umbrella okay. of the the larger parish. The larger parish. Now, Father Mark, let's go back to you here. All right? Let's do. Uh, tell me where you grew up, where you went to school. We're going to walk through the next fifty years of your life. The okay. past fifty years of yeah, your life. Fifty. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, about Fifty-one. Right? I was all born right. in nineteen sixty-one. I grew up in um, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Okay. Which is considered now, where's the, Square? It's uh, southeastern Pennsylvania in southern Chester County. Okay. Uh, mushroom capital of the world. Mushroom capital. Yes. Uh, is your uh, family in the mushrooms? My okay. mother's three brothers uh, raised mushrooms after World War II. My grandfather was a rose grower, and after the um, the boys came home from the war, they began to grow mushrooms. Okay. So I uh, grew up on that farm, and uh, uh, went to public school Kennett, through the Kennett school system. Family was Catholic. Family was, was Catholic. Catholic. Uh, we were all Catholic. We were. Uh, I guess in those days considered uh, a mixed Catholic. My mother was Italian okay. Catholic. My father was Irish Catholic. Uh, same thing I said in the so. I, that was that was forbidden, right? <laughs> that was That's, mixed religion. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> uh, so uh, so we um, uh, uh, not a pious family, a faith-filled okay. family. Went but to not church a pious on Sunday. We yeah. went to church on Sunday, but not really involved in in the parish. Um, okay. I went to religious education, but I only went for three years. Uh, because in those days it was turbulent time because it was after the Vatican, Vatican Council II. Okay. So, it, I keep, um, uh, so things were a little, and little up the in the air. And for the non-Catholics, Mass went from Latin to English. Latin to English. A lot of changes change, yeah, at that time. In the mid-60s, okay. people weren't really, didn't really know what direction they were moving in. So religious education at that time was not what it is today. And uh, so I only went for three years. Um, in those days, you were confirmed in third grade. So after I was confirmed, I never went we back did. to we're religious kind of education. Yeah. 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 So, um, I think my kids did the same thing. I hate to admit yeah. they did the same thing. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, I really didn't know any priests or any, uh, okay. any religious, any Public sisters. Public schools, or, sports, theater, what was your? Uh, music. Okay, I was music. A, I was Played a, instruments? Or? Yeah, okay. uh, voice, sang mostly, okay. and choir. And you still and, do that, right? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. And in fact, that's what I ended up studying after high school was... Uh, I went to Temple University uh, and studied music education. Okay. 
You're going to be a teacher? Concentration in voice, yes. Oh, okay. Always wanted to be a teacher. Oh, yeah. Best either, job either in the world besides school, you. Right, right. <laughs> I like it. Elementary school teacher or a music teacher, so I ended up being getting my degree in music education okay. from Temple. And, uh, and then uh, from there... And at the university involved with like a Newman's Club or anything? Religion was just... I did. That's okay. when okay. I, I, you know, I was a, grew up in a small town on a mushroom farm, and all of a sudden I found myself in North Philadelphia. Yeah. It's a whole uh, different world. It, it was, yeah. and yeah. so I was a little, it was culture shock a little bit. Yeah. So I ended up plugging into the Catholic campus ministry at Temple and uh, at the Newman Center at Temple, and it was great. There was great staff there at the time, uh, great, great people, and... Um, just kind of found my niche. It's a good place to be. Okay. There. Okay. And then, uh, kind of, that, you know, I remember thinking about being a priest as a kid. Uh, and but, every Catholic kid does. Right? Yeah, yeah. But not really taking it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, and then when I got to uh, Temple, I started really thinking about it seriously. Okay. And, uh, but I knew I didn't want to be a diocesan priest. I didn't want to be a parish priest. Okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want <laughs> what that. What makes God laugh? You yes, and yes. right? Okay. So uh, I, uh, I wanted a community. I wanted to teach. Okay. And so I began to look at different religious orders, um, okay. like Franciscans or Dominicans. Okay. or And like Thomas Merton did. In yeah, the seven Benedictines. Yeah. Okay. I was, and then I kind of settled on the Benedictines okay. uh, and monastic life, okay. life in a monastery. And um, prayer and work and teaching. Now, were you going on retreats and stuff like that? Or? I was. I was okay. going to different monasteries, looking okay. at um, different ones to see what I, you know, where you God was calling in? me, sure. what, okay. what I was interested in, where, where I felt comfortable. And I ended up, uh, well, I got a lot of information from a lot of places. And um, I, by a kind of a roundabout way, I ended up going to a monastery in Massachusetts, St. Joseph's Abbey, uh, and they are the Trappists. Okay. Um, but they don't teach, they're cloistered, which means that they're, you know, they live they at that, right in they the stay there, right and in the it's manual labor, they okay. they um, support themselves by the work of their hands. Is this the one at Spencer Mass? Prayer, Spencer okay, Mass, okay, yeah. Okay, sure. They make Trappist preserves. Right, yes, okay. And uh, that's how they support themselves, by these jams and jellies. and. Uh, also, the Holy Rood Guild, which is a vestment-making, right. uh, the, the, the garments that priests wear on Sundays. And it's all made there. All the made there. The jelly and Everything the is made okay. there and supports their life of prayer and study and work. And uh, so I went, I went to visit there um, and um, thought, this is what I was looking for. This is what I'm looking sure. for. This is what I want. And so, Had you read Thomas Merton or anybody? That was this was just not whole until after journey. I began to journey. visit okay. there, okay. and then once I kind of settled on that place, and this was maybe my sophomore year in college, and then I began to visit there regularly okay. through college. Okay. And the plan was to go there as soon as I was f finished my degree, okay. uh, which I did. I worked for a year. Oh, so right from college, oh, you worked paid off of. Worked on the mushroom farm okay. to pay off Tell me, college I, loans. I once heard this story, and that's good. before we go to the monastery, someone uh, told me in church that you would announce at some point to your family that um, I was going to be a mushroom farmer. Right. And uh, what, what's, tell me about mushroom. I mean, you had brothers and sisters doing this? I, I, well, I have one brother, one brother and okay. uh, many cousins, and we oh, all yeah. grew up on the farm. Um, all around each other and saw my family, my grandmother every day. and. Uh, we all worked. All the boys, the girls, okay. didn't work in the mushroom farm. All I know is about mushrooms. You keep them in the dark and spread yeah. manure on them. Yes. Is that, is that mushroom farming? Basically, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. So uh, all right. it's it's all inside, controlled okay. environment. So it's manual work. Yeah. Manual, very manual. I, in fact, I worked harder at the mushroom house than I ever did at the Trappist Monastery. So <laughs> okay. That's, uh, it just wasn't for you. Oh no! I knew. Yeah. I started working there when I was about twelve years old, and I knew I didn't want to. I don't want to do this for the rest it. of my okay. life. All right. Okay. Um, is a brother so, still there, or was he there? Uh, no, my cousin, my uh, one uncle, is still growing mushrooms, mushrooms and right. his son is still. So it's still well, an active farm. Family. It's okay. still in the family. Okay. Still and your an mom is farm. still, is that correct? Your my mom, mom still, still lives on the farm okay. uh, in the house that I grew up in. And, okay. uh, all my aunts and uncles still live all around. Okay, all right. So it's a fam it is a family retreat. You can go back there just as long it as is. you don't have to raise it's the mushrooms. It's the best of 
the, it's the best of times and the worst okay. of times. <laughs> okay, the most, well, that's good. I didn't, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's great you. to be around your family, and yeah. it's horrible to be around your family. I know. It's, <laughs> it's always nice to leave, I guess. It's sad. Yes. Let's go back to the monastery. So you, we go to college, we go to the temple, you're, you're flirting a bit with the monastery, and then you right. pay up. Where'd you work for the year? On the oh, mushroom back, I'm sorry, farm. You said back in the yeah. mushroom farm. So yeah. a year there, paying off your bills, and then full time on. And then uh, in uh, in November of '84, I went to the monastery, okay. and uh, it was great. It was wonderful. Everything I wanted, everything I had hoped for, everything. Well, what's I had the planned process? For. I mean, I, most a lot of people have read Merton. What's you knock on the door, and what happens? Yeah, you visit there and and get to know the community. They get to know you, okay. and then they invite you to um, to to enter as a postulant. Uh, and you uh, you enter into the community and uh, assigned jobs and just like everybody else, just like everybody you are else. a postulant or a trainee. Yep. Yes. Right, okay. right. And then uh, for for you're a postulant for about six months, okay. and then you receive the habit. They still wear habits there, um, and they. And you, this is a, a gown, like a monk's gown, with, right, a, okay. with a hood, okay. and okay. Right. and you receive the habit as a novice. Okay. And. Uh, then you're a novice for two years. So two years you're studying basically studying how to the become rule of Saint rule. Benedict, okay. and you're studying the the history of the order. Um, you're studying some some theology, spirituality, uh, prayer. Um, you have conferences on the history of monasticism. Okay. Um, uh, See, so where you work and then go to classes like is it, right, uh, correct. Um, Merton always talked about there was like uh, the person who trained the novice, the novice master. Yeah, that right. They you meet with the novice important. master okay. uh, privately, and then the novice master is also the one who who is your teacher, basically, okay. your, for classes. And then then he'll invite other monks to give classes on other okay. topics okay. that they may be, you know. So this is two years of working and classes. So you, classes okay. and prayer. Uh, you know that monks pray seven times a day. You're in church seven times a day. Now, I used prayer. to go to the Holy Cross Monastery in Berryville. In Berryville. Same type of lifestyle. Up at three. Uh, up at what, three what's a.m. What was the daily schedule like? You rise at three, okay. uh, and you're in church by three thirty for vigils, uh, which are which are psalms and prayers and readings, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, you have uh, lauds the first hour of the day at around six o'clock. And then mass, and then uh, a period of work, uh, and then you're back in uh, church for uh, terse, the third hour of the day, around 9 a.m. Okay. Sext, the, the uh, sixth hour of the day, around 12 noon. Known, the ninth hour of the day, around 2 p.m. Then vespers or evening prayer at around 5. So it's work, mass, or prayer, work, work. mass, uh, through the whole day? Yeah. Mm. Right, and then you're in bed by eight o'clock. It's a long. One of the things. Well, you continue again. You talk about. Uh, uh, so you, you you're going through this process for two years. Two years. T and now, do you leave occasionally to go to the outside? Oh no. No. You're you're, you're there for two years. Okay. You're there forever. Family, uh, <laughs> mushroom farmers they visiting. Come, they can come see you, okay. right. but you you can't go see them on okay. on a. You know, uh, I did leave like when my father had surgery one time. I Emergency went home to, to help out with okay. with things like that. But you don't say, I, I think I'll take a couple of weeks this summer and go home and see okay. my family. You just Summers are spent there. What, they, what was your particular they, job or did you have jobs? There? I was the uh, quality control assistant in the in Trappist Preserves, which oh, basically wow. one of the things was I was a taste tester. Okay. So I got to taste the jellies. And these the are these from Spencer Mass jellies. I think you yeah. can you still buy them. Yeah, oh, was, yeah, yeah. And they're in Acme, correct? Buy them online. Yeah, yes, they okay. sell them in the and you would eat. So you got to taste all that. That's I not got a bad to taste. Job, no, right? it was a pretty good job. <laughs> okay. And then I was also a cutter in the Holy Root Guild, which meant that, you know, I laid the patterns out okay. on the material and cut okay. the. And the day would be so many hours with jams and jellies, so many hours cutting, is that how it works? Usually they, they do the jams and jellies in the morning okay. for about three hours, and then, um, and then you have a two-hour work period in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, total work time is about a five-hour work day, but the rest of the time you're either studying okay. or you're in church. Okay. Now, did each novice, did you, it was like an individual little cell or room, or how was that? Had your own room. Okay. Oh. Right. And you room. basically had very, I mean, the pictures I've seen, a bed, uh, a locker. A bed, a desk. 
Very, very little. A stuff. hook on the wall because you didn't have <laughs> okay. clothes. You know, and you, okay. had, you had your habit. You had your habit, and you had your work clothes mm. that you turned into the common laundry, and okay. uh, so you know you, everything was in common. Um, How many novices went through it? Was there a class? When I was there, uh, there were about uh, oh, I would say about ten of us. Okay. How many total through. people in the monastery? Uh, again, when I was there, it was about 70. Okay, so it was a pretty good size at yeah. that point. Yeah, yeah. And still they're down to around about 40 or 50 now. Yeah, so, so okay, so you go through the two years of training, you're being trained. And then you take simple vows, okay. uh, which are, simple vows basically means that the, there's a time period. You take vows for two years. And then at the end of that two years, you renew the vows again for another two years. Okay. Then after that second two years, then you're you're, uh, you can petition the community and the abbot uh, for solemn vows, which okay, means so that lifetime for, a life, commitment. for a lifetime okay. commitment. Now, for most people, or not most, but many people don't know, that type of existence is a vow of poverty? Or no? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, Explain, yeah. Explain yeah, sure, the, yeah. The Bennett, uh, usually, you know, people think of the vows as poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay. But the Benedictine tradition, which is what the Trappists fall under, um, actually take the vows of obedience, stability, and conversion of manners. And within conversion of manners, celibacy and, and uh, uh, poverty is, or chastity and poverty is implied okay. in that conversion of manners. Okay. And stability basically means that um, the monk vows to live with that community in that place okay. for the rest of his life. And with their rules and with their, right. So and so you went through that you went to two years training. And, and, and then, then I took simple vows. The double commitment two years and two years. I left after my first two years okay. of simple vows. Okay. So I did not renew my vows. Okay. So now would you okay, so then so where'd you go what what was the next I was step? there for four years and okay. I left uh, and went and went home. Um, Are you ordained at that point? No. No, no I was so not. I was not okay. studying to be a priest. Oh, okay. Had no desire to be a priest oh, okay. while I was there. Oh, okay. Uh, and um, so I went home and back to my parents and um, just went to work. Uh, okay. Got a job um, with a. It was a nonsensical. Just needed a break and to think things up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, well, I entered the monastery too young. I was. Yeah. I was. I was too young. It hadn't done right out of college. Yeah. Hadn't done anything. You had to see the. Yeah, had to see the. Uh, so, um, so I, I uh, worked for a real estate investment company actually, okay. and uh, then uh, I uh, decided I met. I started to meet other priests. I started to meet other diocesan priests because you know I joined a parish and got sure. involved in a sure. parish and uh, and uh, in Delaware and. Um, started to meet other priests and uh, met the vocation director for the Diocese of Wilmington okay. and uh, got to know him and uh, so finally one day he said well why don't you consider Join studying for the diocese for okay. the diocesan priesthood okay. and uh, so that's so the I did. The light went off. Okay. So it was just a, it was by invitation you know right. somebody saying well why don't you you made, a, you made a commitment before. Much. So what do you do? Then you go to a seminary. Then in I went Wilmington? to the seminary. Okay. I went to. Uh, they sent me to um, Seton Hall University. Oh, okay. Immaculate sure. Conception. C.J. Carlisle, my favorite Seton. basketball coach. Yes. yes yeah. Yeah. I used to coach there in the summer. Yeah. I don't know whether to. I know. I used to take my kids. All right. Yeah. Beautiful campus. Tough neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, beautiful little campus. Yeah. Oh, so you were at Seton Hall. I was at Seton Hall. Is yeah. that where you actually get a graduate? Is that where you get like a master's? That's where I got oh. my master's of divinity. Okay. All right. Right, and the Master of Divinity is the degree that prepares a man for ordination to priesthood. Okay. And this is all being done, so the Wilmington Archdiocese is sending you to Seton Hall to get this degree. Okay, Correct. I understand that. Correct. So you get, the, you get, so you get that. What's yes. the next thing? Uh, the, this gets well, complicated. Yes, <laughs> it does. Okay. It, and uh, uh, there are certain steps yeah. through, okay. throughout the seminary. I, I had to do seminary. Usually it's a four-year program. If you have the correct number of undergraduate philosophy degree uh, to skip the credits, years, yeah. oh. and uh, but I I see when when I did a lot, did a lot of studying in the monastery, but I got no academic credit for it. Okay. So uh, so I had to do five years because mm -hmm. I had no studying music. I had no philosophy credits, okay. so I had to get the the correct number of undergraduate philosophy credits, 
and so they just add a year on. That's all. Okay. And, uh, and so it's all done at Seton Hall? Or all done at Seton all Hall. All done at Seton Hall. Lived on campus and everything? Lived in the major seminary on campus. Oh, yeah, on campus. That's I, right. I spent about, I mean, we'll, go, we'll talk about Seton Hall, my, what a delightful little campus, but yeah. Like you say, one of the toughest neighborhoods, I think, in South oh, Orange, yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. But a delightful yeah. and a very a great history seat. In yes. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you were there five years, okay, living on campus. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then in my fourth, my final year there, I was ordained a deacon, which is the step, a transitional deacon, which okay. means that you're going to, your plan is to okay. go on to right. priesthood. And I uh, was ordained for the Diocese of Wilmington. And then in 1996, October 96, 96 I was uh, ordained, ordained a priest okay. for the Diocese of Wilmington. Right. And you have and your degree, well, how do they do the degree? Your degree says Seton Hall? Yes. How do they do mm -hmm. that? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a master's in theology or a doctorate? Master's of divinity. A master's in divinity, okay. Okay, so you get out of Seton Hall, you've been ordained. Mm -hmm. So where did they send you? What was the next step? The next step was assigned a parish in the Diocese of Wilmington. And, and the Diocese of Wilmington covers the whole state of Delaware and the Maryland Eastern Shore, all the counties of the Maryland Eastern Shore. And uh, so I was assigned to St. Mary Magdalene in uh, Wilmington. Oh, so you're in the city. North, you're back in, a, you're North in the Wilmington. city. North Wilmington. Oh, okay. How, the, how long were you there? I was there for two years. Okay. And then I moved as associate pastor. Then I moved at, again as associate pastor to Holy Angels in Newark, Delaware. Okay. So a smaller town, but still a fairly good size, right? Yeah, yeah large good parish. Large University parish. of Delaware, right? Yes. Yeah, right. So you had mm -hmm. a, okay, a lot of kids, right? Yeah. How long were you at? Uh, New I was there for, oh gosh, seven, seven years? Oh, that, seven was a, years. So that was a bit of a stay. Okay. Yes. Okay. As associate pastor, and then um, oh, associate. Let me make clear. That means there's another I was, uh, priest there. Assisting the pastor. Okay. Okay. So there's at least two priests there. Yeah, there were three at both parishes, Mary Magdalene and Holy Angels. There were there were oh, three these were, priests. These were big, and these were big parishes. These were large parishes oh, okay. with schools. And, okay. Uh, so uh, then, um, after that, in 2004, I was asked by uh, the bishop to to come here to Centerville. It should be pastor. quite a change from Seton Hall, Temple, Newark, and Wilmington. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. like going back to Kenneth Square. Okay. Now, how, <laughs> how does it work? Do you is it like the military where I, I mean the greatest joke? Well, you were in the and we make sure we talk about that. You you put this wish list in there where you wanted to be sent, knowing that the army in my case is going to send you right. young private wherever they want right, you. Right. Right. Is that how when? Yeah, yeah. It, there's a dialogue that goes on between the bishop and the personnel board oh. and the priest about, you know, where would you like to go? What, because, you know, they want to send somebody that's going to fit yeah, make in Yeah, make place. both parties comfortable. Right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, so there's a dialogue that goes on. Right. And then sometimes the bishop will say, well, I really need you to you go gotta here. you got to go. I'm the boss. And, yeah. you know, that's that part happens. of obedience is to say, well, and, and you take that on faith. You say, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't. I don't really feel called to that particular parish, but Bishop, if you say it's meant to be, it's I meant should to be. go there, then it's I'll happen. give it a try. And okay. and that's that's what. It's so cultural shock when you came to. I, mean, I don't mean as a Christian, but I mean that's a that's a mm, change, right? It's a big change from Newark. Yes? It was a change. Yeah. yeah uh, not so much cultural shock as um, uh, you know I, I'm the only priest here. Um, I'm the only priest assigned to the and parish. And we talked about it before. We, I mean, I think the hardest part of you, knowing nothing about your job, I would think the hardest part is the living alone and having to do, I mean, it's 24-7, it looks like to me. Well, having a monastic background, I don't really mind living you alone. Mind living, okay. Uh, yeah. it, in fact, I... Would, you prefer? I prefer it. Okay. All right. And you're not alone. <laughs> um, You've got cats and dogs, yes, which we'll talk about yeah, later. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, I, I, it's... Um, some guys, some guys would struggle with living alone, yeah, but um, I, you know what? That's kind of what dio the way diocesan priesthood is moving. Because when, if you look at our diocese, uh, most of the priests now do live alone. Yes, that's a shortage of priests they're going to have. Yeah, to. Okay, yeah, right, and okay. uh, there's a lot of parishes now that are one-man parishes. Okay. So, uh, so, so a lot of guys are living and, alone. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, there's a balance. I mean, yeah. you know, you got to strike the balance. You got to mm -hmm. make sure that you know you don't hide in the rectory that you, <laughs> okay. that now, you, important that you come thing out I, once in a while. Yeah, I don't want to miss. While this was all going on, you give me the, also there's a military career. I did, so and, then, and that, yeah. that's another thing. You yeah, know, right. I never intended ever to enter the military, but um, there, there came a time in, in my ministry after about five years of being ordained, I, I just thought I would like to do something else. Okay. Uh, and I knew some other priests who were chaplains in the um, 
Air National Guard or the Reserve, uh, Army Reserve or, you know, Navy Reserve or... And so I thought, I looked into that. We have, a, we have an Air Force base in our diocese at Dover. Dover right, right, right. Uh, and I thought, well, let me, uh, and I got to know the priest, the chaplain, the active duty chaplain who mm -hmm. was assigned there. And I thought, let me just talk okay, to him yeah. and see what it's like. And so I ended up do doing that uh, for 10 years. I was an Air Force uh, Reserve chaplain at Dover with the 512th Airlift Wing, major the Reserve Wing. I, forget your rank. I, I resigned as a major. Okay. Yeah. You enjoyed that? Was that? I did. Yeah, it was, yeah. it it just, was but it exciting like it, and interesting. Yeah, okay. and, uh, did I, you have anything to do with tragically the returning? Uh, I did. I spent some time in the mortuary. Okay. Uh, I was never assigned there, but I would go in and, and uh, help out. Help out with you. Uh, help out with the chaplains who were assigned okay. there. And uh, it's um, very uh, rewarding work, uh, but very hard. That would be tough. Work. That would be Emotionally tough. draining for them. Yeah. I, I used to volunteer, as you know, there very, for a very brief period of time. Anytime they knew returning dead service, just the whole base, you could feel the air go out of yes. it. Yeah. Which was, uh, you know, like, yeah. all right, it's, a, it's an honor, but at the same time, it's a terrible, terrible yeah. duty. All right. Well, how about, look, we've just got a couple minutes left. I want you to plug all the good things going on in the church in a second. But I wanted to know, uh, listed on the... <laughs> Church Bulletin or the your pets in the house. Oh, oh Go yes. Go over my dogs and cats. Walk. Yes. Two, two. I have two pugs. Uh, Big Sam is ten years old, and uh, little Scarlet is four years old. Okay. And I have a cat. Okay. Gizmo. So it's a busy household, right? Yes. It's yeah, a good, yeah, yeah. But they're good company. Oh, there you go. Now, Father, how about if someone out there is watching this and saying, you know what, I'd like to get into the Catholic Church, just a phone call to Mother of Sorrow, or what's the procedure? Yes, there's a process. Okay. You know, like okay. anything, there's a process of, uh, of um, preparation. Okay. Um, but, uh, yes, uh, anyone who's interested could call, and I'm happy to sit down with them or... Okay, so they, just a simple phone call will be fine. Sure. How about a couple of plugs now? Today happens to be Shrove Tuesday, so at 5 o'clock, me and my family are going to be at uh, the Corbley Hall having pancakes. Yeah, pancakes. Any big events coming up that the public should know about? Yeah, well, th all through Lent, um, which begins tomorrow with Ash Wednesday, we're doing a, a series, a, a video series called Catholicism uh, by Father Robert Barron, who uh, is pretty famous in the Catholic world of television and okay. videos but it's an excellent series on uh, the history of Catholicism and Catholicism all over the world and uh, that's taking place th through Lent on Tuesday evenings and Thursday mornings and then uh, we're also uh, getting uh, wound up for our big Easter egg um, sale uh, you know, all kinds of buttercream and chocolate and peanut butter and all the good stuff. And you're looking for people so, to dip the eggs, dip buy the, the eggs, eggs buy the <laughs> eggs, anybody who wants to. And uh, our, our eggs are getting pretty famous out okay. there. So, uh, I bought a couple last year. They're excellent. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. So. And the important thing, anyone watching this, if they have questions, we're in the phone book. You've got your own website. Yep. They can simply call that, and through the office, they'll direct you to sure. choir directors, right. youth, whatever. Okay? Exactly. All right. Well, it exactly. wasn't too bad, was it? No, it was great. Well, Father thank Mark, you. thank you very much. We'll have you back, all thank right? Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching Discover Queen Anne's County. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.